to hello hello everyone my name is Sana Dushistova and uh, I've been working on tools since 2004 and uh, today I'd like to talk about target communication framework so the problem these days is that almost uh, every device software development tool has its own method of communication with target system. And when you try to integrate that into a single solution, usually it becomes an enormous problem to set up the target right. And then uh, you end up having a bunch of uh, separate tools that do not work together well, that impose uh, unnecessary restrictions on the target system and uh, also are quite difficult to configure. So that was a problem that a lot of uh, tool vendors had and uh, Probably almost every vendor had its own solution for that. But at some point, there has to be an open source one. And uh, this is how target communication framework appeared. So target communication framework is a uh, universal extensible, simple, lightweight, vendor agnostic framework for tools and target to communicate for purpose of uh, different tooling for development uh, of uh, embedded software needs. It allows single configuration per target or sometimes even no configuration. It has a small overhand and footprint on target side. Actually, agent can be made very small. And uh, also, it has a transport agnostic channel abstraction, and it allows auto discovery of targets and services. Here's some history of the project. This framework was uh, developed by Windriver and it was donated to Eclipse Foundation in uh, 2007. In 2008, uh, it had an initial release. It included the uh, core protocol specification and initial Java framework C agent that worked on VxWorks, Linux, and Windows examples. And uh, Eclipse uh, Remote Systems Explorer integration and debugger integration for CDT. In uh, 2011, there was a uh, major uh, release in terms of uh, functionality. Uh, we added terminal service, actually, that was donated by. Yocto people. Uh, disassembly watch points and uh, initial support for Python binding and Target Explorer was added. And this year, TCF uh, reached uh, 1.0 release and uh, now it includes the Python binding, Target Explorer, and uh, we also added the lower shell to the agent. Unfortunately, community didn't quite grow. Right now, main development is still done by Wind River. There's also Xilinx that employs uh, two initial authors of uh, target communication framework for my Wind River employees. And uh, Mona Vista, that's uh, me.
OTCF code is licensed under uh, Eclipse Public License. And C Agent is also licensed under the Eclipse Distribution License. That's a BSD license used by some Eclipse projects, which require dual licensing along with EPL. For more details on that license, you can check the legal resources page on the Eclipse.org. So the main architecture of the framework. All communication links can share the same protocol, which simplifies the connection setup and allows uh, transparent tunneling without unnecessary protocol conversions. The protocol has transport agnostic channel abstraction, so it doesn't depend on any specific transport such as TCP IP or serial or SSH. In fact, any third party vendor can contribute the value add server to do a transport conversion from a standard TCP IP channel into custom channels, such as JTAG or even proprietary hardware connections. All services can immediately route through the new transport and take immediate advantage of the value add. Currently, the reference implementation that's out there support only TCP IP, but uh, other communication and addressing schemes can be added easily. All high-level services operate on the channel abstraction. So some definitions. Under peer, we understand the communication endpoint. Both host and targets are called peers. A peer can act as a client or a server depending on the, the services it implements. Service is a group of related commands, events, or and their semantics define a service. A service can be discovered, added or removed uh, as a group at a communication endpoint. And a channel represents a communication link connecting, connected two endpoints, peers. A single channel may be used to communicate uh, with multiple service, services. Multiple channels can be used to connect uh, the same peers, but no command or event ordering is guaranteed across channel. So the TCF communication protocol defines uh, data packets, properties, and roles common for all services. It also defines cont contents of a uh, part of a packet. The rest of the packet is uh, treated as an array of bytes at that level. It provides uh, multiplexing, open multiple channels per peer, and uh, also proxy packet forwarding on behalf of other hosts. The protocol defines three packet types, commands, requests, results, responses, and events. Each packet consists of several protocol-defined control fields followed by a byte array of data. Binary representation of uh, control fields is a sequence of zero terminated ASCII strings. The format of uh, data depends on the service but uh, the framework preferred marshalling for data formatting is JSON. So command, in, in command, a token is a unique string generated by the framework for each command. It, it is used to match results to commands and uh, a service name is used to identify a service that handles a command. A command should always be answered with the result. The result doesn't have to be positive. It can include an error code or can be a special end result that indicates that command was not recognized. But uh, there always must be one. Since the client cannot detect that a response is missing, if for some reason the peer is not able to answer the command, it should consider such situation as a uh, 
fatal communication error and it must shut down the communication channel. It's not necessary to wait for a result before sending the next command. In fact, sending multiple commands in a burst can greatly improve performance, especially when the connection has a high latency. But at the same time, clients should be carefully designed to avoid flooding the communication channel with unlimited number of requests, since this will use resources in forms of memory to store requests and time to pr process them. Next uh, packet type is uh, event. Events, well, this whole framework is event driven, so that's a uh, most important packet probably in here. So in the event, the service name identifies the service that fired the event. Events are used to notify clients about uh, changes in peer state. Services should provide sufficient variety of events for clients to track remote peer state without too much of polling. Clients interested in uh, a particular aspect of the target site should have a model of that state and update it by listening for relevant events. If a service implements a command that changes a particular aspect of peer state, then normally it should also generate notification events when the same part of the state changes. And it should also provide a command to retrieve the value of the state to be used by clients to initialize the model. Service events are defined statically together with commands. The framework does not do any event processing besides delivering them to clients. However, service can define additional event-related functionality if necessary. For example, commands for event filtering, enabling, disabling, registration, etc. If events are sent too frequently, they will cause flooding of the communication channels and degrade performance, so some care should be taken when designing events for a service. However, too few events will force clients to pull for changes and can also degrade their performance. Also, there is a special type of event which is called flow control. And, uh, it can happen that uh, one side of communication channel produces messages faster that they can be transmitted and that will cause traffic congestion. So by flow control event, uh, this situation can be reported and uh, so clients can react to it. Next feature, which is my favorite personally, is the uh, auto discovery. Auto discovery is uh, done by the locator service and it uses the transport layer to search for peers and to collect data about peer attributes and uh, capabilities services. The discovery mechanism, of course, depends on the transport protocol and it is a part of that protocol handler. Targets known by other hosts are added to a local list of peers. Automatically discovered targets require no further configuration. Additional targets can be configured manually. All TCF peers must implement locator service. That's the only required service and all other services are optional and formally they're not part of framework. So current implementation is based on uh, UDP broadcasting and uh, that implies some limitations like targets in different networks cannot be discovered. So what's already there? Today uh, one can download 
a plain C implementation of a lightweight extendable target agent. There is a Java client API, usable standalone or on top of Eclipse. There are Python and uh, Lua client APIs. There is a complete debugger UI implementation in Eclipse. CDT integration for debugger launching. There is a target management remote system explorer integration for file system and process browsing. <coughs> and there is a target explorer, which is a lightweight UI for remote file system and process browsing. Terminal access and debugger launch. We also provide documentation and uh, usage examples. So cur current uh, TCF agent has the following available services. The lo locator service, memory service. It uh, provides uh, basic operations to read write memory on a target. Then uh, processes service. Process service provides access to the target OSS process information allows to start and terminate a process and allows to attach and detach a process for debugging. Debug services like memory and run control require a process to be attached before they can access it. If a process is started by the service, its standard input and output streams are available for client to read write using stream service. Stream type of such streams is set to processes. Run control service. Run control service provides basic run control operation for execution context on the target. Register service. This service provides basic operations to read, write, CPU, and uh, hardware registers. In addition to commands that can set get individual register context values, the service defines commands to set get values at multiple locations. This allows to get set multiple register contexts in one command to specify offset and size for get set on uh, large register groups to get set truncated register values. For instance, only the low 32 bits over a 64 bit register. So then uh, we have this tech trace service. This service basically implements thread stack backtracing. Well, breakpoint service speaks for itself, I think. It allows to set breakpoints. Then the memory map service provides basic operations to get and set memory mapping on a target. The uh, path map service manages file path trans translation across systems. File system service allows the operations uh, with the target file system. The system monitor service can be used for monitoring system activity and utilizations. It provides a list of running process, different process attributes like mainline environment, etc. So it, it can provide functionality similar to Unix top or Windows task manager. Terminal service provides access to targets operating system's terminal login and allows to start and exit a terminal login and allows to set a terminal window size. If a terminal is launched by the service, its standard input and output streams are available for client to read, write using stream service. Stream type of such streams is set to terminals. The stream service is a generic interface to support streaming of data between host and remote targets. The uh, previous LTT and G uh, integration used that for streaming data back to host to show in Eclipse. 
So this service supports asynchronous overlap data streaming. Multiple read or write command can be issued at the same time. Both peers can continue data processing concurrently with data transmission. Also, multiple clients can receive data from the same stream. Clients uh, are required to express interest in particular streams by su subscribing for that service. And it also allows flow control. Well, disassembly service provides disassembly and the context query service allows to search for a context that matches a pat pattern. Unfortunately, uh, all the uh, debugger-related services are uh, architecture-specific and right now only work on uh, x86 system. Other services that uh, are responsible for transport can be uh, cross-compiled and can be used on different targets. But uh, additional work is required to port the debugger implementation to different architectures. Well, there is a porting guide in the documentation that briefly says how to do that. But uh, that has not been done by anybody from the community <laughs> yet. Now I prepared a little demo. Here's my setup. Let me switch to my system. So that's an open to the uh, 12.1, and uh, right now I'm running a uh, QMU x86. Uh, let me find the console in here. There it is. <coughs> so there is an agent running in the um, daemon mode. And uh, I'll start an agent on my host in the uh, interactive mode. Now I want to see the peers. So there are four peers. Uh, I have two network interfaces on this one. And uh, there is also one from the QMU. So we can see the peer info. And this one. Mm 
As you can see, it shows the information about uh, the peer. Now let's try to connect to it. Right, connection established. So now let's let's send some commands in there. So roots for the file system, I got it. Now I want to try to open the uh, root directory. And now let's see if I can read it. So it returned me the list of files with the attributes. That's the command line. And now let's see if I can show you the Eclipse debug integration. It might take a while. I'm not sure what's going on. So while I'm trying to bring this up inside my uh, virtual machine, which is quite slow, I can take any questions if you might have some at this point. Not really, it's not documented. Well, I think it might be possible to do this, but, well, Windriver's commercial solution is based on TCF. 
they do not ship GDB based debugger. Okay. So TCF is designed with that in mind, but there is no such uh, framework in the open source because nobody is willing to donate their resources to do that. We should be happy to take your contributions, <laughs> but right now the community is quite small, though pretty active. And uh, actually, I think that's one of the most friendliest community that I know of personally. And they're always willing to help. It's just they happen to work for vendors that see uh, that kind of open source implementations as commercial disadvantage. I wish I could have launched that beforehand, but uh, that would interfere with the um, command line demo. So I decided not to do that. Since I never demoed the command line part, and that one I showed at uh, ELC Europe and Barcelona. Yes, all, all clients are equal. And actually, the uh, auto discovery is uh, based on that fact. Uh, well, we include the OpenSSL into, into the Linux implementation, yes. It's services based, so uh, ptrace part is separate from the file systems part. Right. So it, doesn't make, it doesn't make sense to ask a Linux system for a register dump. You want to ask a process for a register dump. So I'm just sort of trying to understand what, when it's running on a, on a better Linux target, what, what this agent's really reporting on the state of the, the system, or is it attaching to a specific process? So the agent, when the agent gets the command, it looks for a service that can handle that command, and then it launches that service. So if, say, you're interested in you know, browsing files in the file systems, then it will start that service and get the data back to host. And if you're debugging, it will be doing that through different services. So each service is responsible for its own set of functionality. OK, finally. <coughs> so Target Explorer 
is going to discover my target. I hope it never failed before today to do that. OK, yes. That's my target. And their process on target. And what I want to do So I started at the top in QMU. Now I do refresh. Now I do fine. And we want to attach. So as you can see, we're attached to the uh, top. You can see the disassembly view here. Now I want my debug view back. All right, so. If you do the suspend, you can see the uh, registers here. Since they changed their marked in yellow, you can step over here in disassembly as well. So here we don't have the sources, but I recompiled top and uh, let me start my top. How did you touch? We'll do refresh again and reattach. So now it opened the um, source file. And you can see variables. And registers. And we can single step.
that's something new because I only updated that yesterday from the latest Git snapshot. So breakpoints also work here. But then again, that's X86 target. Did you say not use the GTP protocol? No, it's not. That's all over the TCF protocol. Okay. Um, is there an agent that would, can proxy other agents? Sort of what I'm getting at is that for debugging most embedded systems is a two machine process, right? Mm -hmm. One machine may have a JPEG download cable mm -hmm. that's connected to the serial port of the embedded machine. Yes. So you would have a TCF agent running on the workstation with some of the functionality visible. And then, say you can spin it from the target, and then you have running from the target with some another piece of the functionality available. Can you proxy both through the connection to that? Yes. One? There is a uh, value add server. Uh -huh. So there is a possibility to do that. Yes, that's in design. We don't have converters out there for, say, uh, JTAG to. TCP IP, that's not implemented, but that's possible, yes. And there is a proxy that can do that, where you have to plug in your value add, yes. So you know, you can just be a network proxy to another network, right? So the machine, the target itself may have the network on it, and may run a Linux TCF agent. Yes. Yes, you can do that. What? <laughs> so that's all I had for demo, because I'm not sure that you're interested to see how it can browse remote files. So questions, any more questions? Last call. No? Okay. what you do to debug with GDB. Nothing more. So some references. Well, our wiki, the documentation, and that's also where the source code lives. And the mailing list is a great place to ask questions. And they're usually answered. So that's, that's all for me. Thank you.